Hi, this is Marissa, and today I'm going to teach you how to go through a formula that will make your goals real. This involves you writing stuff down, so be prepared to pause the video a lot, because I'm going to tell you the truth. When you have a goal in your head, it's not even a goal, it's a fantasy, it's a dream. When you have a book like this, and you can call it your goal book, and you write out your goals and you go through I'm just about to take you through bit by bit, stage by stage, you go back to that book, you can look at it, you can touch it, you can just make it real. So remember, if you do not write out your goals as a plan and write out how to accomplish them, you don't have a goal. You have a wish, you have a dream, you have a daydream. If you want to go get a pen, get a nice little book like this. You can do it on your phone too. You can make a document in your computer and be prepared to make your goals real. So let's start now. Get your book, pause this if you need to go and find one, create one. And I want you to pick a goal and do not even start with, I want to lose five pounds, I want more money. These are what I call wishy-washy goals. No. If you can make your goals real, you might as well make them huge, big, enormous, phenomenal. So if you say, well, I want more money, that's my goal. Oh, hang on a minute. Hey, I got $10 here. There you go. You go, well, that's not my goal. But you said, I want more money. And I learned this when I used to work with women who were infertile that come in and go, you know, I just want to be pregnant. I want to be pregnant so bad. If I was just pregnant, I go, well, as I look at your notes, you've been pregnant six times. I know, I keep miscarrying. So being pregnant is not your goal, is it? What? Isn't your goal to carry, to full term, a healthy, robust, bouncing baby, to deliver a perfect baby, to be a great mum? Yeah, that's my goal. Well, why don't you say that? Because you can be pregnant lots of times and never have a baby, or you can say, my goal is to have a perfect baby. How about this? My goal is to get lots of attention. For what? A nervous twitch? Explosive gas? That will give you attention, but that's not what you want, is it? Nobody wants explosive gas. So let's start with a big goal. Pause if you need to. Take some time, open your book, and write out a big goal. Now you can have a career goal on whatever, I'm gonna have my own company, create my own business, invent something. You can have a relationship goal. My relationship is wonderful. We grow in loving and respecting each other. And you can have a health goal. But I want you to pick one, only one, not three, not five, not 10, one goal. It can be career, it can be health, it can be love. Pick one goal and then I want you to decide why you want that goal so much. So the first thing is, I have a goal. I want to have my own business. That's my goal. And now you're going to go to the next page and write out why do you want to have your own business so much. And the more reasoned you can write out why, the more likely you will make that goal real. So write down why. Write down as many whys as you can. And remember, you can come back any time to this and think, oh, I thought of another why and another why. So leave plenty of space, take your time. And when you've done your whys, go to another page and write out who will benefit from you achieving that goal. Of course you will, but who? Who will benefit? For instance, if you have your own business, you will employ people who will benefit. Maybe your kids will go to private school. Maybe your business will allow you to help your partner have their business. The more people who will benefit from you achieving your goal, the more reasons you have to achieve that goal. So write out who will benefit from you achieving a goal. Who, how, and why will they benefit? You're gonna buy your mama house, put your niece and nephew through private school. Did you think of your mind as like the genie in a bottle that says, your wish is my command? And I want you to understand that every thought you think and every word you say is a blueprint that your mind, body and psyche must make real. So when you write out your goals, don't say, I wish I could be rich. 
I long to be in a loving relationship. Write it as if it's already happening. I am a millionaire. I am in a loving relationship. You might go, well, that doesn't make sense. It does make sense because your mind only works in the present tense. When you say next year, I'll have a bikini body, it doesn't know what next year is. And so you must write your goals in the present tense. I am, I always, I have, I do. You must use words that make a picture. I want more money where well, you can find 10 cents or a dollar. But you have to say, no, I want more money. I am making a phenomenal amount of money. I am making a million dollars because I monetize a gift I have, or I make $10 million a year because I monetize a skill. Then you have to make it detailed. You have to give your mind an image to go towards. What you want wants you. What you are moving towards is moving towards you, but you must have an image. So. You could say, I'm going to write a best-selling book. You could go, I am writing a best-selling book and it is all about X and it's full of Y. And the reason people love it is because, and the reason people buy it is, and when it gets reviewed, they say this. And you see, you're making your goal real. You're making it tangible. You're giving your mind a very clear picture to go towards. So let's go further. So let's turn to another brand new page. And remember, we're always starting on this page. So that page is free and that page is free for more. This new page is about your discipline. How many hours a day are you going to spend working on your goal? How often are you going to come back to this book and look at it? I want you to write out, I am, I am always, I have, I do, and I want you to fill that in. You see, the best goal in the world will not work if you don't work, and many people fail at this point. They write out a goal. My goal is to be a millionaire. My goal is to be famous. My goal is to be wildly in love, and they think that's it. It's not it. If you want to be madly in love, write out all the reasons why, but then you have got to Put yourself in front of the kind of person you want to share your life with. If you want to start your own business and you have a reason why, you also need to have the discipline to meet people who will fund you, sponsor you, joint venture with you. So I want you to really understand that the best goal will not work if you don't work. You can have the start point. But you have to keep going. Many of the most successful people ever say, well, you know, I had a goal. Luther Vandross had a goal to be a rock star. And people said, well, you're an overnight success. He went, I don't think so. You know, I sang jingles for KFC for 12 years. That's a long night, 12 years. And people said, but Luther, you're singing on television. That's cool. You get paid a lot of money for KFC. He said, yeah, but it's not my goal. And he stuck it out and many people have got so close to success and had to keep going. And you have to keep going. So look at your discipline and decide you will give more to your goal. Give even more. Work on it. Look at it. Write it out. Think about it. Talk about it. You must be prepared to give so much to your goal. In fact, you must be prepared to be unstoppable in the pursuit of your goal. When I wrote my first book, I took it to several publishers and some rejected it. And I still remember that feeling. Authors never forget it, the thud. I sent my manuscript off. I could hear the thud, it came back. They never send back the manuscript unless they don't want it, and that was okay. But then I heard the thud again, and then I heard the thud again. And when you hear the thud for the fifth and sixth times, it's like, oh no, they're sending back my book. J.K. Rowling, do you know how many times Harry Potter got rejected? Her goal was to write a best-selling book. She heard the thud over and over again. Every time she heard the thud, she picked that book up. She put it back in an envelope and she sent it back. And she said, you know, I had a little plastic covering and I had no money and I bought this special little cover and I put the manuscript in it and I made it look so nice and they sent it back without it. And I had to go and buy that cover again. 
but she was tenacious. She kept going. She got rejected, she came back. You must come back from rejection. You must see a denial and a no as a delay. You must have what I call a bounce back factor, like a big rubber ball, you bounce back. Writers have had their work rejected. Desperate housewives, they were told that would never make it. The Sopranos, people said that will never make it. It's too violent, it's not funny. It happened to become one of the most successful TV series of all time. And if you knew, even Gone with the Wind, they were said that will never make it. So many things we buy, like Trunky, the little children's suitcase, Tangle teasers, were told this, this won't make it, you won't make it. Many people you see out there who've made it have been told no many, many, many times, but they come back and they come back. You must not allow rejection to stop. You must understand the only person who can ever, ever, ever reject you is you. And if you don't reject you, no one can. My husband owned a chain of comedy stores and one day a comedian went up and he told the joke, it was funny, it all went downhill. And when he came off, my husband was waiting and he said, did you see? how much they loved the first joke. And I loved that because he didn't focus on the fact they didn't like any of the others. He held on to they liked the first one and he knew he could take that and have lots more first ones. And you can do that too. So let's go to another page. This is really, really important. I want you to work on your self-belief and confidence. Write out what kind of confidence you will need to have to achieve that goal. What beliefs do you need to believe to achieve that goal? You know, someone said to Michael Jordan, you're so lucky, he said, I know, the more I train, the luckier I become, because you make your own luck. Write out your beliefs, write out the confidence you will give to yourself because you can fill yourself up with confidence. You were born with it, you haven't lost it, you've just buried it under limiting beliefs. You can remove those. Let's go to another page, and this is really important. You are worth it. You might go, look, that's just the same as the other page. Not quite. And even if it was, I want you to exhaust yourself with writing. You may just say, I've only written three lines, it's fine, but tomorrow, you might think of another one and come back. Why are you worth it? Why do you deserve this goal? What makes you worth it? Why do you know you're worth it? How do you know you are worth it? And if you don't know, how are you going to know that you are worth it? You must believe you're worth it. You must know you're worth it. When you know it, the world will join you in knowing it too. Remember, pause the video. Please don't try and keep up with me. This is serious. I want you to pause, write, unpause, write more. I want you to do this. Most people listen to these tutorials, but this is not something to listen to. It's something to participate in. Do it with me. I'm doing this for you. I want you to have phenomenal success. And while you're writing, I'm going to tell you something you probably already know. There were many studies in the 50s where they took group of graduates and said, how many of you have goals and how many of you write them down amazingly, I think. This is not word for word, so please don't quote me, but I pretty much know this. I believe 3% of that graduating year had goals and wrote them out. A higher percentage had goals and didn't write them out and another group had no goals at all. They went back 20 years later, 30 years later, the wealth of the 3% who had goals and wrote them out was worth more than the other 97% combined. Not only did they have monetary goals that they'd reached, they had better relationships, better health, and all of this was attributed right back to one thing. They had goals, they wrote them out, and they wrote out how to achieve them, why to achieve them, what it would feel like when they achieved them, who would benefit when they achieved them. They didn't probably do all of that, but that's what I make my clients do. And if you do it, 
you know that you can have that success because that test has been done more than once. It was done again in the 1980s. It was done again in the 1990s. And we're doing it today. Write out your goals, write out your why, write out your reasons, write out what you are going to learn. The new things you're going to learn. If you're going to be a writer, you're going to be a speaker. If you're going to have your own business, you better learn accountancy and so on and so on. If you're going to sell, you need to learn how to speak. If you want to be a great anything, you need to learn marketing. I train people into be, being phenomenal therapists. I tell them the truth, look, it doesn't matter how amazing you are if nobody knows where you are. In most of our businesses, we must learn marketing, search engine optimization. I didn't know any of those things, I do now. I wrote a book called Trying to Get Pregnant and Succeeding. I never liked that title, but it is the most searched for title on the web, Trying to Get Pregnant. So I called my book a title I didn't even agree with because I don't use the word trying. I use the word doing. But I understood that what people search for, I don't like the word losing weight. I don't like the word losing, but people search for that word. So you're gonna to have to learn marketing, technology, IT, social media, and that's good because the more things you learn, the better you'll be. Mick Jagger studied accountancy after he was a multimillionaire because he wanted to know where his money was going and he's very smart. You can do that too. So let's finish with our last few pages. You're worth it. What are you learning? And now I want you to write out on this new page that you are going to act it, talk it, think it, speak it. What will you do differently? I want you to act as if your goal has already happened. I am a best-selling author. I have my own successful business. I am a fabulous entrepreneur. I am an inventor. You need to say it in the same way all the women I met who couldn't conceive, I made them go, I'm expecting a baby that I'm not. Look, you're expecting a tax bill, aren't you? You're expecting a phone call. It's not there, but it's coming. You can expect a baby. You are in a state of expectancy. So I want you to think, how would you talk? How would you dress? How would you speak? What would you do? How would you spend your free time when you have achieved those goals? Write all of that out. It's a lot of writing, I know, but remember, until you write it, it's not even real. So write all these things. You're going to have faith, courage, and I want you to write out some of the risks you are going to take. And here's the truth. The only risk in life is not to take the risk. I rang up a publisher and said, would you like to look at my book? They said, no, I sent it to them anyway. Someone had told me that in publishing, if you write on the envelope, this is not an unsolicited manuscript, they accept it. So I sent it in and they accepted it. But I also heard the thud when it came back. But I had to take the risk. I had to ring a publisher and say, would you publish my book? I had to ring an agent and say, would you be my agent? Many people said, no, no, no. Success will hear rejection and they keep going. So what risk are you going to take? You're going to stand up and talk about it. It's like people who go on Shark Tank and Dragons and they get laughed off and some of them become so successful. Anyway, the only risk in life is not to take the risk. If you take a risk and it doesn't work, you learn something. We all know that Colonel Parker, I don't know how many Kentucky Fried Chicken recipes he submitted until he submitted the right one. And it's not important. It's only important that you keep going. How many fails Edison had before he created a light bulb, but he kept going. So... Plan it, want it, write it, work on it, know you're worth it, and see it as if it was already happening. So don't say one day I will, in the future, next year, in five years, now. 
I am becoming X now. This is happening in my life now, right now. And when you've finished, well done, but this is not finished. I want you to go back every day, read what you've written, maybe add a little bit more. And as you read it, more ideas will come up, more ideas will come up. Here's something that happens. When you do something to make your goal real, something happens, something shifts. So my story very quickly is that I always wanted to write, but I wasn't sure I could. And then I wrote an article for my daughter's school paper. That was really easy. Everybody loved it. I decided to write a book. I went to an event, sat next to a girl. We were talking and she told me she was a publisher for Penguin. And she gave me her car, but then she happened to say that she was moving to Hong Kong in six weeks. So I took her car to put it in my bag. And six weeks when I knew she'd left, I called her number and asked her, and they said, she's not, she's left. I went, oh, she asked me to send my book draft. And they went, really? I said, oh yes, I've got her card here. And she asked me to send my book. They went, okay, well look, send it, but you must write on it. This is not an unsolicited manuscript, because if you don't, we won't open it. So I sent it to them. I sent it to lots of other publishers too. I took that risk. You see, someone put me in front of that woman. The universe conspired as I took the courage to write my book. The universe put me next to a publisher. And then I went to a dinner party. I met an agent and one of my clients said, well, you know, the best agent in town, he's your client. I'm like, really? They went, yeah. And I went, oh, and I called him. He came to me, he was my client. I treated him for depression long ago and he became my agent. I don't need an agent, I've got a book deal already because Penguin took my book, he said, I will get you five times what they're offering you. And he did. All these things happened, all these unforeseen events came out because of my commitment to do something. The minute you commit to something, to your goal book, write it, read it, touch it, the minute you commit to it, the universe works with you all kinds of unforeseen, amazing things will be put in your way, right in front of you, because you committed. Everything will fall into place. Things will happen. Coincidence means two angles that fit together perfectly. All because you took action. Your book is your action. Write in it, read it, look at it. Fortune favors the brave. Be brave, be courageous, be bold, have big goals, and you know what? I bet you achieve them. Let me know. Please share, please like, please subscribe. Let me know how else I can help you. And if you have other friends who've got dreams or fantasies or wishes, share this, help them achieve their goals too. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon.